when did you realize I'm pretty good at television? Because we know you're a great basketball player, but I would argue you're even better on television talking about sports than you were as a basketball player. Was there a moment? Because And the reason why I bring this up is when you played, people would have said, man, Charles Barkley is an asshole. You didn't have the reputation yeah. as a player of being the kind of commentator yeah. that you would grow into. So I'm curious, when did you realize, hey, I might be good at this television thing, I might be good at this media thing, and were you conscious of not allowing that aspect of yourself to be seen while you were playing? How do you think that happened? Well, number one, that's a great question. I never look at if I'm great or not. I let other people tell me that. But what I try to do, I try to just say, okay, just tell the truth. People respect the truth. My mentor, Dick Ebersole, said something to me one time. It was interesting. He says, he's the first person to mention television to me. He says, what are you going to do when you retire? I says, I don't know, Mr. Ebersole, blah, blah. He says, you should do it on the television. He says, you're going to be great on television. I says, well, how do you know that? He says, because you always tell the truth. He said, but it's a double-edged sword. He says, you're always going to, he said, people are going to love you and they're going to hate you, which is what you're really looking for when you're hiring the announcers. Yeah. He like, I said, what does that mean? He says, well, people say they want the truth, but they really don't want the truth. They want their truth. Because people say, uh, I want you to be honest with me. They only want that if they agree with you. So I had to learn, like, because everybody wants to be liked. Anybody tell you, I love when I hear guys say, well, I don't read the newspaper, watch television. First of all, you're full of shit. You do read the newspaper and you watch television. <laughs> what else you do, okay? Yeah. I love when I hear Jock say that. Of course you do. But then everybody says, well, I don't care what other people think. First of all, everybody cares what other people think. But you have to always say, I'm going to do my best. You know, it's interesting. Okay, let me give you an example. You see all the stuff going on with Kyla Murray. Yep. Uh, they put a clause where he has to study the playbook and four hours a four week. hours a week, and all the people are complaining. It makes him look bad, and blah blah blah. And how can he sign that contract? Well, first of all, they gave him two hundred million dollars. He can sign the contract. But I learned this from Dr. J one time when I first became a star. I was really upset about an article, and he came. I said, Doc, I need to talk to you about this. Blah blah blah. He says, Okay, let's take a step back. Is the article true? I said, What? He says, if you're going to be successful, like, that's why I don't do social media. Those people are just idiots and jackasses. But sometimes criticisms are fair. And he said to me, Charles, before you ever get mad at some reporter writes about you, the first question would be like, is that true? So the point I was making about Kyle Murray, you know, everybody's like, yo, man, look in the mirror and say, they, they're paying me $200 million to study. Do I not study enough? Like, clearly you don't. Clearly you don't, or they wouldn't have put that in. Because it's never been put in any contract in the history of civilization before. <laughs> right. But when somebody criticizes you, the first question you ask yourself before you realize if it's bogus or BS, is that criticism fair? And uh, that's a really big deal. Uh, we're like, okay, no, that person just, they just want to be a hater. But like, sometimes you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, that's a fair criticism. I got to do better.